In this video I'm going to create a flat illustration following a sketch that you can download for free, the link is in the description of this video. Let's fire up Illustrator, create a new file, from the arts and illustration I'm going to actually select this one, 1920 by 1080 let's name it flat and hit create. Now we need to take the exercise file which is over here and take the sketch, click and drag it and once you click once you'll be able to actually see this. I'm holding down shift to make this a bit bigger and I'm going to scale it a bit just so we can have it in the middle of everything. We can then go to the transparency tab, lower it to 30% from the layers panel, actually make sure that this one is locked. So we toggle the lock and now we can create a new layer which we'll use to actually draw the initial elements of the illustration. We'll use just lines for now and then we'll try to figure out how we can find the color scheme that works for this composition and play around with some colors until we get to what we want to do. In the colors panel, I make sure that the fill is actually empty and then take the pen tool and start off. I'm going to start with the character because that's the most fun and start with the face and then draw some of the shapes here. As you can see for the shapes of the character, you actually have like pretty simple shapes. I'm not sure if I'm going to use a, an outline for all of these elements. Maybe I'm just going to create them for now and then mask them later. So I'm going over the hair, which we'll have to wait until we draw something. Let's do the ear and now maybe the neck. The neck starts from over here and make sure to have this one like this. We're going to actually mask it once we have the shirt, but for now it should be good enough. Let's close it off. We can do the hands now, just because I'm trying to do elements that are fairly similar. I need to zoom in because here you can see you have kind of like a dip. Maybe even over here, click and drag to make it a bit more rounder, to have a curve that's looking a bit better than just a straight one. Try to find the spots for these anchors and then I'm going to go over here. Let's try something else for this part. I'm actually going to go like this. And then with the direct selection tool, which is over here or A on the keyboard, you can click on it and drag it until you have this curve, which is super nice. We need to move around, hit space and click and drag just to move around if you're not using a trackpad or anything like that. I'm currently using a trackpad and I've been using one for a long while. So my goal a few years back was just to try to do design on a laptop without needing a mouse. So I got used to actually not needing a mouse and that's pretty nice for me because I can travel wherever and I don't have to worry if I have my mouse or not. I do the same for web design, I do the same for uh, graphic design, for illustrations and everything else. I only use the trackpad of my laptop. Here we're going to have a bigger transition so this needs to be smaller and let's see, maybe create something like this and then it is like a wave. Close it down. Hmm. Because this goes on top, it would be kind of hard to actually do everything from one shape. So what I'm going to do is actually make sure that this goes behind everything. And then I'm going to have another element that's over here. That's going to be this part. It's selected and let's do this part right now. Click over here, create a curve. And this will probably go over the ear just to mask it and make it easier for me when I'm going to... Because it's hard to explain, I'm going to actually put some colors here. So let's have this one. Let's make it black. Let's have this one. Let's make it black. And this one, let's make it double click to get the fill. And we can actually choose a color. Let's say this color. Okay and get rid of the stroke now we have this one this needs to be on top and i'm going to use the same color here let me save it just so i can have it maybe this is the color that we'll end up using i don't know but yeah let's do the same here make sure we don't have any strokes so hopefully this clears up how i'm going to use different shapes which looks like just one element uh, which is the hair it's get over here make sure that the fill is selected now we have this and now this needs to go behind everything and this needs to go behind it i'm using 
control left bracket just to move things around. This is going to be the same color. I'm pressing X to switch between the fill and the stroke. Now I can select none for it and this color for the hands. Now we're going to need to actually do the shirt. I'm thinking about the shirt being in just one shape. I'm going to go over here and I'm trying to keep things very simple, like not have a lot of pads. And I'm going to do this like so. And you can see the inflection point, so it's pretty easy. Okay, and let's assign it a color just so I can see it. What we need to make changes for is this one. Switch to the direct selection tool, click and drag. And now we have a beautiful shape. Same here, because this one goes on top of everything, I need to lower it down so it goes behind it actually. This one, I can see it needing to go like this, but we need to get rid of this one. So I'm going to move the hand and actually go like this. And of course we can do in the armpits, I'm going to hold down shift and select both of these. And when I'm going to make the adjustments, it's going to do for both of them. Now we can do the pants. The whole thing with this sketch was that I was trying to make sure that the character actually looks very simple, like uh, made out of simple lines, nothing too fancy. This is going to be the pants and with the direct selection tool, I'm going to round this off and let's make some elements for the shoes. <laughs> now, uh, I wasn't sure if this character would be barefoot or have some shoes, but it's a combination of both, I guess. It would be nice for this one to actually get on top of the illustration. Let's actually simplify this part because it was a bit too complex. This looks like a shoe for sure. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to do just that and try to contain it so it's within the pads. And now this, with it selected, hit command left bracket or control left bracket to send it behind the pants. We can do the supporting elements and then we can go to the face and try to create some elements that are defining the character. I'm going to start with the first shape, which is actually this one. I think I was trying to figure out how I can frame something and this shape came about. Okay, I'm going to create this one. And then because I want the, to have the same inclination over here, I'm going to hold down option or alt, click and drag and hold down shift just to keep it at the same level and try to figure out where you can place it. And then we can close this on by using the pen tool, clicking and dragging. And now it's going to close, but we need to close it down as well because we don't have a path here. With this done, hit A. So we have access to this ones and we can adjust the radius of these corners until it looks similar to what we had in the sketch. Then we're going to have this element, which is just going to be a rectangle. I'm going to start from over here create it, maybe have another color to it. And then with this one and holding down shift, you'll have both of these selected. I'm going to use the shape builder tool to get rid of these elements on the side. So with shift command M, <laughs> no, <laughs> which was it? was it? Shift M, yeah, that's it. No command, no control. So just shift M. You can hold down the option key to remove things and you can remove those on the sides. And now you have two separate shapes that actually look perfect together. Now we can create some additional elements, have this rectangle, maybe have it a different shade, maybe a darker shade, zoom in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create, I'm going to hold down Alt Shift to create, to put it in place over here. And I'm going to hit Command D just to duplicate it. In the sketch, I had it over here. So I think I'll need to adjust it and actually move this one over here, this one over here. So there's a bigger distance and hit command D again. And now this is way better. Inside, we're going to have a rectangle that's going from side to side, just to make sure that it's centered. And then holding down Alt, I'm going to make it a bit smaller and then clicking and dragging to make this round. I'm going to try to place it here as well. And then by holding down Shift and selecting both of them, Go to the shape builder tool and we need to get rid of this element. Same with these ones. Make sure that they don't go over. Holding down alt 
or option you can get rid of all of these elements so now everything looks pretty cool okay let's send the background elements and everything behind i need to make sure that i have everything selected so i'm holding down shift then right click arrange center back and it's going to do just that and maybe use the rectangle tool just to create a shape behind every element so i'm going to select that right click arrange center back and then we're going to play around with the colors but we still need to work on some of the elements over here so what i'm going to do take the pen tool and i'm going to try to imagine how i want to do these elements so uh instead of just doing a shape that's stroked i'm going to actually do a field shape and try to play with these looks just to see how that will end up looking for the eye is <laughs> fairly simple and then this part is very undefined <laughs> so i need to figure out how i can do it so what i'm going to do i'm going to start from this part and just create kind of like an eyebrow that also sticks out and then for the nose i'm going to continue for from where i was left off and actually try to make it pointing a bit upwards like that and let's see if we place one here how it's going to end up looking so it kind of looks like a shape but it's very irregular so this one needs to be a bit higher up and this one like so this one is not really that good of a shape so i'm going to adjust it because i want it to come from a smaller size to a larger size so i need the transition to be as smooth as possible and not have some weird bendings whenever you don't know how to do this i would recommend going over here and testing out the smooth tool let's select it again with the smooth tool and try to go over it a couple of times until you get something that's as smooth as you expect it to be cool and then we have the mouth i'm going to do something fairly similar with, with the mouth because it's just a simple smile and we also need an eye over here so i'm going to hold down option to, to create a copy and actually hold down shift to scale it and make it a bit smaller and now we can look at inspiration from other illustrations and try to figure out a color scheme for this one let's go to dribble and usually i go to inspiration illustration and from here i look at the filters and i make sure that i'm looking at some of the most popular ones from either the past week or the past month let's have the past month for now and i'm going to look through them see if anything catches my attention and then i'm going to use that color scheme for me the first thing that stood out was this one which is a base of red and black and orange or even this one yeah so let's take this as the example and i'm actually going to right click copy image and go back to illustrator and i'm going to paste it in so hit command v or Control v and then go to object and look for create object mosaic and usually i do uh, three by three hit ok and now you get this one but i'm actually gonna want to sample it just to use the eyedropper tool so with the eyedropper tool i'm going to create a few rectangles and then get these colors and just sample them to see what what i can do with them wait is there a lighter one yeah this one and then this one and then you can always adjust that's the beautiful thing with color scheme because you can adjust it to work with what you want to do let's see something darker yeah that one okay let's get rid of this and take a look at what we have here and we can disable the sketch because we don't need it anymore i'm actually going to toggle the visibility and now we're left with only the vectors for this illustration and I'm going to start off by trying out different colors. So I'm going to do things for different parts. Let's select these ones and make it like that. This one needs to be a darker shade. This one can be even darker. This one can be the darkest. I think it actually looks good with this black color. But I want to adjust it to have, to have kind of like a blue tint. Let's get it over here. And I'm actually going to select this one. So we get the darkest one, double click, and then I'm going to lower it somewhere around here. So it works with it. Works with it. So let's select the hair and the elements that actually have a darker shade that we're going to use. 
I'm going to select all of them and sample with the eyedropper tool and sample this color. And now we have it there. Uh, same for this one, maybe find a color. These ones can be lighter. This one can be white. And we haven't used the pink. So let's try to have the skin as pink and see how that would look like. We're going to have it pink, but we need to make it a bit more pale or a bit more yeah, towards this color. Okay, let's make the pants the same dark because we needed to, to go behind and have the shoes be black. And I would also like to have some separation in the neck area over here to have maybe like a shadow. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to draw a shape that's following the profile of the neck. And now we have the shadow that makes it look a bit better and also some definition inside the ear. I'm going to create a shape that's similar to what you would have inside of an ear and let's zoom out and this looks a bit better than what we used to have now there's still a few shapes that are for me too straight for example this one so let's take it with the direct selection tool and let's just move it down and have the pants moved up i'm actually going to send this behind and with this one let's create a smoother line something that shows that this is on top of it we also need to move the character a bit so i'm going to have to actually move everything a bit down this one and yeah let's select the whole character and now we need to select each element individually because i don't know any other way of doing it okay so i'm making sure that i'm selecting all of the elements that make it and we need to move it down so it touches the barrier or whatever this is let's try to put some kind of a shadow uh, behind things so the character is looking this way but the sun is kind of from this part so let's make a circle from where the sun is and i'm going to try to do a bit of shading so then i'm going to create a part that's shaded for this element i'm going to hold down alt and create a copy like this and then with this one i'm actually going to only need this part so i need to select both of them hit shift them and get rid of these two but i still need the one that was before so i'm going to actually have to make a copy command c command command f to paste in front and now you have two of them select these ones hit shift them and get rid of these ones and now you can actually double click to use a darker color inside it let's see if it works or maybe i can see the difference double click yeah it works so it can be either lighter or it can be darker it's up to you uh, how you would like to do this okay i'm gonna do this and then also have one for over here so kind of like at the bottom command c command f to make a copy and then click and drag and drag it a bit higher shift m get rid of these and now we have this element that can be a bit darker if you want it to affect the other elements as well you can click on it right click arrange bring to front and then you can go to transparency and actually set it to multiply and this is going to create a different effect let's try the same for this one actually have it to on multiply but this is too strong i just need to make it a bit like this and now you are starting to get some definition of this illustration i need to do the same about this just bring it a bit up and let's select the ones below and actually have it this color multiply and then lower it to something like 10% of or 20%. Now you have some shadows over there. Whenever you're going to have that, you're also going to have like some small artifacts with elements that are just right at the edge, you know, and then there's this weird line of contrast. Usually what I do is just move it a bit higher up and let's do the same for this one. And then we need to move all of these above because one of those streaks is coming over the character. And this is giving the character a bit uh, more depth on the background, but the, with the character still being flat. So this would be the exercise for today. If you want to download the sketch again, you can find it in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more and I will do one. Have a nice day and take care, everybody. Bye.